we are going to go to the world of the unbelievable right now. Let's, in the words of the great Johnny H. Jazz, turn back the clock to the 28th of November, 2011. And there was a pretty ordinary little horse running at Folkestone off a mark of 69. Most of us thought, oh, this will be a one-trick wonder. The horse's name was Humple. Of Bo Kirtle at the second last. He flies at the leader. Free speech lands over a length and a half clear. But here, with another surge on the outside, is Hunt Ball trying to get to him. They've got one left to jump. Free speech the far side. Near side, Hunt Ball. They draw towards it now. Hunt Ball on the outside jumped it well. Gets a nose in front. Fighting back is free speech, but Hunt Ball is going to land the plunge. Eight the one this morning, and the set off favourite. Uh, a huge amount of money won on Hunt Ball as he wins it by three to four links from in second on the back of this season you'd think i'd be speaking to anthony not his owner on the back of a ferrari i believe he's on a tractor uh, right now um good afternoon anthony yeah good, good afternoon matt are you on a tractor i am i've just got out to speak to you i i presume though on the back of all the cash you must have earned it's a super duper tractor well, no, actually, the funny thing is, the local um, mechanic down the road, he said, oh, you'll be buying a tractor. And now I said, no, don't be silly. <laughs> don't be silly. But um, <laughs> do I, want, I don't want to do anything like that. I've been doing it for sort of 35 years. And, um, you know, to, to um, you know, go and do well, what's happened now is unbelievable, isn't it? It is unbelievable. It is, Anthony. Look, tell us how we can start believing this. First of all, Let's just go back to that Folkestone race on the 28th of November. Quite clearly, your trainer, Kieran Burke, had told you that you've got a horse who was much better than a mark of 69. The cash all came in. Um, what did the, Was the horse just improving? Did you find something wrong with it? What, why did the horse suddenly start improving like it did? Well, like I said, I've got to take my hat off to Kieran, really. You know, he, he's a force behind him. Um, but I, I, I bought the horse off of Kieran... Um, he, he had no form, nothing at all. We mm. went round and looked at a few horses and nothing didn't sort of tickle me fancy. And then Kieran rang me up. He said, oh, I've got another one just come in. He said, it's for sale. Come up and have a look. So I got up and have a look at it. The only thing I liked about it was his head and his, he had some lovely eyes and ears and that was about it. And um, I bought it there and then. And I was driving back my car and I thought, what the hell have I bought here? Like he was only 68 it was a chaser, which I don't like chasers anyway. But I, I originally bought it for Kieran to have a, have a run, have a runner, basically, because he rode his first ever winner for me at Cheltenham um, in a conditional jockey's race, and I was just trying to help him up the ladder, basically. So you've got a horse with a nice head and a couple of good ears on him, but a horse you don't really want. You coughed up, what, 400 quid for him? Well, yeah, something like that, yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, like I say, it's, it's um, you know, you, you, I just bought it basically for that, and it was only when um, Kieran had him got got him going training, and um, he rang me up and said, "Look," he said, "this has been really burning the gallops up with Sparky May, you know, one of his good horses," and um, so we, so I got in the car and went up and had a look, and um, my God, like all of a sudden, you know, our eyes were open, and um, so we. Popped him down to to um, Folkestone, you know, and we, we basically knew we just had to jump round. And um, we had Eamon Coleman on it, you know, just top jockey. Um, he said, "Oh, McCoy wants to make it all." And all I said to him, "We'll just keep tabs on it because, like, you know what McCoy's like going round a bend. He seems to get three links on. You're just going round a bend, doesn't he?" And um, so I said, "Just keep tabs on him, and then um, we should be able to pick him up, you know, in the." in the home straight like and um you know julie well you know done the business and um you know yeah we scooped up a lot of money and you know happy days and, and the, you went on to font well then you went to folkestone did you feel when you got beaten at plumpton three or four runs later that maybe the wheels were beginning to come off no not at all i i um i was talking to one of my fellow trainers colin tizard and um i said this this will win this race by two fences couldn't even have, have it getting beat. Lost a fortune down there on it. And I drove the car back and I just thought, God, am I that far out, you know, with it? And um, I thought, I can't be. You know, we knew what he was doing on the clock. And um, Kieran said, I just think he got stuck in the mud down there. 
And, um, well, obviously that's what he did do. Mm. Um, so we, we got back and thought, right, well, the only way we looked at it, we thought, right, all we're going to do is have a bigger price next time and we'll just lump some more on. And that's what we did. <laughs> and, you know, we've just been doing it ever since. And I, I said to Luke, I was up the um, hospitality um, place of um, um, Wayne and Sarah Clifford, the Bathwick Tires, and yeah. um, I said to Luke last week up there, you know, before Cheltenham, I said, look, I said, you don't mess about the job no more. I said, just lump all your money on you and retire. Did he listen? No, he thought he thought ah, not. He's gone crazy again. Yeah, he'd be, but, he'd you be, know, he'd be too worried, Anthony, of having to share it with with Emily. I think. <laughs> well, obviously, unless he's got a secret account. But um, <laughs> he, um, he just, uh, you know, he was just giving us all the right signals. Um, and I know the handicapper put us up fifteen pounds, but I said to Kieran, I said we still got two stone in hand. And I said I walked the track with. Um, I walked the track with Nick Schofield in the morning and I said to Nick, we walked round, I said, we're up the top, the top of the hill and I said to, because Barry Garrity rode it for me last time and Barry said, oh, we, we'll beat you next week. He said, we got two, um, we got a stone in hand with Henderson's horse. And I said, no, I said, that's not enough. I said, it's not enough, Barry. <laughs> so, and I said to Nick, I said, up the top of the hill, I said, you'll be able to look round and shout, Barry, where are you? Where are you, Barry? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, that, and that's what we did, you know. And I said to Nick, all we had to do was just hold on to him, just hold on to him, just jump round. And I think he held on to him that much, he couldn't jump that well. But as soon as he, he gave him a bit of rain, two out, boom, boom, and he was gone. And, um, you know, we still got another two gears to go yet. Boom, boom, indeed. Just just, just tell us again what you said You said to Barry. I said to Nick Schofield, I said, look round and shout, Barry, where are you? Where are you? <laughs> you know, and and um, you know that's how confident I was of him. And, and, and Nick Nick come out and and he said I've never known an owner so confident. I said Nick, just ride it like you're down Taunton. I said all you got to do is just sit on it. Yeah. I think he thought I was talking a lot of rubbish as well, but he did come back and he said you don't have to know how to pump a jockey up. He said I I just was floating on it, you know. But it's um you know I, I, like I said I just think it rubbed off and Nick give it a peach of a ride had it in the right place right time all all our problem was we just didn't have to get brought down and he had him well placed um you know job done so the big question Anthony is where does this fairy tale go next well we were a bit unlucky you know uh, the handy we were lucky to actually get into this race because handicapper and um, piddled me off a little bit and I thought right I won't mess about with a handicapper we'll go straight into the gold cup um and like I had to, it was like 25,000 to cough up to do it. But if we couldn't have got into that race, that's what I would have done. And I haven't got any regrets now because I said to Kieran at the time, I said, look, I said, what, I think the Gold Cup, what's the Gold Cup, half a million or something? I said, well, look, we'll cop this race here. We can bet the half a million. And that's what we did. So um, we, we've had the Gold Cup money, but in another way. So Anthony, did you really win over half a million on on the horse? Yeah, sure did. Oh, my goodness. And you're still yeah. boring the tractor? Yeah, well, it was like Elvis said, it's not going to affect me. That's what he said, one at the same. <laughs> <laughs> Just, <laughs> you're an absolute fruitcake. Um, <laughs> um, so so you go to Aintree now, is it, possibly? Um, I, I don't know. We, we're going to probably, um, there's Aintree or we're probably, um, or there's a, there's a, um, a race back at Cheltenham. In about a month's time. So entry, it'd be the bowl, wouldn't it? It'd be the Grade One, presumably. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, because we've, we've got to step him up to see whether he can um, get the trip. Um, but we're not worried about the trip because I think we're going to see major improvement when he even goes up in trip. Because he's only just like, like he's only just coming to himself two out, you know, over two and a half miles, um, and you know, there's going to be major improvement. Um, well, we, I, th I thought originally in the Gold Cup we had to find about two stone to shake up the Gold Cup, and we know we had that in hand. And, um, you know, uh, that, that's still there now. Mm. But um, we're, we're just going to have a look, see how the, if the horse is really well, and and see what Kieran says, and, you know, and go from there, really. 
I remember in the old days, of course, nowadays, I think they take the chase racing, but I imagine he'd be quite well handicapped over a hurdle, wouldn't he? <laughs> um, I don't think he hadn't actually got a hurdle no. mark, like, you know, but I, he probably, I, I don't know why change it, you know, he, no, he, no. he's been joking. serving it up to him at this trip and, um, you know, make, make the hay while the so, well it's shining. Santi, your gut feeling though, do you think it will be, do you think it will be Angel? Do you think it will be this Cheltenham race? What's your gut feeling? Because you know what's happening with this horse and we all need half a mil. Well, wherever he goes, you've just got to lump on. Yeah. You know, we'll we'll sit down and I talk to Kieran and, um, you know, we'll we'll plan it out. You know, like I say, the most important thing is Longs the horse is showing us all the right signs, um, which he is. He's absolutely bucking and kicking this morning. I've just spoke to Kieran, um, and he's he's look he's absolutely on fire. Yeah. So um, you know, you know, he should jump up. You know, in in um, you know, find some more improvement. Yeah. Um, but like I said, at the end of the day, I know that's a, a like a hundred and fifty grand race up there. Um, in the in the Cheltenham ones, only uh, twenty eight or something. But yeah. um, you know, we're just we're basically going to go wherever the easiest race is. You don't need the money, you know, just, do you, these days? Well, no. Well, well, whatever the money is, we can just back it to to, to top up that money. So another mill. Um, you know, so it, it doesn't really all long as he, long as he delivers, we're in pocket. Yeah. And Anzi, and, just just tell our viewers a little bit about yourself because we've seen you ride before, of course that we can't show it, but the famous day at Wincanton when, when you when you celebrated about a, a furlong uh, before the off. Um We've seen you on the back of Hump Ball, which we're having a look at now. Um <laughs> you obviously um are a great character. I mean, presumably you do just love horse racing. Oh, it is. It's um, you know, we're I'm banging away on the farm all day long, and so um, speak, yeah. and it's like well, anybody in business, you know, does your head in, and um, it's just a release, and you know, to, to go racing, it is just well, unbelievable. You know, you boys don't realise how lucky you are day no. in and day out doing it, no. and um, you know, but you know, I've got a, it, well, it doesn't matter whether we're down at Folkestone or up at Cheltenham. It's all the same to us. Every day is a Cheltenham day, and. Um, you know, that's what it's all about at the end of the day. And I, I, more, more, more owners got out there and really enjoyed themselves and, and um, you know, uh, for what the sport is. And, Anthony, your great line at Cheltenham was uh, bugger the cows, dare I say it, on air. And I do apologise for anyone who might be offended. <laughs> and I pray to the good Lord that this isn't my last show. Um, but that was one of the great lines ever, I think, in racing. Um, are the cows OK? <laughs> yeah, they're OK. Is um well, a good friend of um, Kieran's what sponsors him down at uh, Penmill Hotel down in Yeovil. Um, and a flat out now, like, so um, <laughs> we never got back very early. And it's just, uh, you know, actually my throat's still funny now um, from all the shouting and, you know, you, like I say, you just can't sort of take it in. We Like I say, when we had that winner up there 12 years ago when Kieran rode it, he was 105 to 1 up there when we backed that. And and the auntie and everything she just couldn't get the money in her. She only had fivers and tenors like and I said to her, Just don't bother back and nothing else, just lump it all on. And um the old Colin at the time said to me, I said, You're bloody mad, not he I said, No, I said I said, We Kieran was claiming ten pound off of it and there was about twenty four or five in the race. I said to Kieran, just jump out and lead all the way. And and that's what he did. And um, you know, that was still living with me until now. And it's a, it was only like the Sea Biscuit story that actually kept me going. I sat down in my chair one day thinking, oh, bloody hell, McCoy's won another winner, you know, 2,000 odd winners. And you, know, you think to yourself, surely I'm going to one, you know, just one. <laughs> and because I used to put the Sea Biscuit film in and watch that. And like, well, I used to base myself on red. Well, now we actually got a Sea Biscuit. <laughs> and, um, you know, you just, like I say, you just don't know how good he is. And, you know, hopefully he, he stays sound and, in, in, um, you know, we're ready to rumble again. But yeah. like I say, i got to take my hat off to Kieran and, and Pat Rodford and, and all their staff up there because they're the backbone behind all of it. And they've worked really hard to keep this horse sound. You know, so it's, 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 you people don't realise how hard it is to keep these, you know, you can get a horse right for one race. But to keep him sound, and Kieran always ring me up. I say, "How's the horse? Is he well?" Yeah, he's abs. And Kieran is saying me how well that horse is all the time. And you know, he knew 
the horse is right. And that's the most important thing with a trainer, is just knowing that animal inside out. Yeah. And, um, you know, he's served it up to him every time. And, you know, we I thought we'd go to Cheltenham and know how good he is, but we still don't. We still don't know how good he is. We're just, I was just looking up that horse. Was it Ikea Dudery was the horse, wasn't it? That's right. Yeah, yeah, that's the baby. Yeah. Well, look, Anthony, we could we could not have any racing this afternoon. Just talk to you all afternoon. I think we get just as many viewers. But um, uh, just before you go once more, Anthony, just remind you what you told Nick Schofield would be saying at the top of the hill to Barry Geraghty. I said, look round and ask, Barry, where are you? <laughs> and, and, I, and I said, when you get the two out, I said, you'll have to shout louder. <laughs> And it was right, wasn't it? Yeah. And when I, cause when I come back, Barry come in and congratulate you. And I said to Barry, I said, I told you a stone wasn't no good. You he said, yeah, you were right. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony, have fun on your tractor for the rest of the day. Look after the cows. And, and you're giving us all so much entertainment on all the racing channels. Anyone who's a fan of horse racing is just loving it. And, and uh, genuinely, thank you for being in the game with us. So um, have a good afternoon, Anthony. Yeah, no, thank you very much for having me on your show. And... Like I say to every viewer out there, when this horse comes out again, just get on, just put on all you can. I tell you what, he'll he serve him up to it. He, like I say, this horse is on a roll, and I can't see, I can't see anything in the country beating it. Everyone will be telling their grannies, just lump on like you did. Yeah, you just lump on and, and go with me, and, and um, you know that we we can take this country out of recession. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony, you deserve your very own yee-haw. <laughs> yee Thanks very much, Anthony. Yeah, no, thank you, Matt. All the best. Top man. Bye, everybody. Bye, bye. What a show. What a show. David